Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. The internet is an important part of our lives every day, and digital infrastructure, specifically data centers, supports the growth of the internet, whether it's on our phones, computers, or connected cars. With the growth in data centers comes a need for more power to run those data centers. Indeed, this is why digital infrastructure forms a core part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Digital infrastructure assets have a central role to play in the transition to a low carbon economy, which resides in sustainable cities. And people are starting to take action. Environmental goals have gained increasing importance for corporations and their employees, customers, shareholders, and other key stakeholders. Data centers have a heavy reliance on the electrical grid and comprise a significant portion of electricity usage globally. In fact, data centers are one of the most energy intensive building types, consuming 10 to 50 times the energy per amount of floor space compared to a typical commercial office building. According to the United States Department of Energy, data centers comprise 1.8% of electricity usage in the United States. So data centers are significant users of electric power. However, data center designs and their ability to have multiple tenants make them a more efficient use of energy than the alternative, which is older, more traditional on-premises servers. The factors that matter most for data centers are greenhouse gas emissions, renewable energy sourcing, power sustainability, and water sustainability. So number one is greenhouse gas emissions. These are often measured by what is known as carbon intensity. Carbon intensity is a metric used to provide a sense of greenhouse gas emissions characteristics after factoring in both the scale of a business as measured by its energy use or revenues and the average emission rate based on the primary energy source used to generate electricity for the electrical grid. For example, this includes hydroelectric, natural gas, coal, and wind power, in order to better frame out greenhouse gas emissions for data centers, they are typically broken down into three types of scope, based on guidance from the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Scope 1 includes natural gas, which is used for heating and fuel cells, diesel, which is used for backup generation, and refrigerants, which are used in the cooling systems of data centers. Scope 2 covers electricity purchased or consumed by the data center and scope 3 includes all indirect sources of greenhouse gas emissions, so these even include the emissions from the customer's equipment of that data center. Number 2 is renewable energy sourcing. Data center operators have increasingly focused on sourcing direct energy, where possible, from renewable sources. Given the large energy commitments and sophistication required to enter into renewable energy partnerships, these are actions that the cloud service providers such as Amazon Web Services or AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud use more frequently given that they are the only tenant inside their data centers. These cloud service providers also have the ability to locate their sites near renewable energy sources. However, the multi-tenant segment of the data center industry, which includes companies like Equinix and Digital Realty, has been less active in renewable energy sourcing given uncertainties in things like the duration of their tenant leases, the power used by their tenants, and the preference of their tenants for data center locations that are closer to established data center hubs. The third area of environmental focus for data center operators is power sustainability. And within that, power usage effectiveness, also known as PUE, is an efficiency metric that is the ratio of the total amount of electricity consumed by a data center to the amount of electricity delivered to its equipment. PUE is always equal to 1 or greater, and the closer that the PUE is to 1, the more efficient the data center. According to the latest survey from the Uptime Institute, the average PUE of a data center currently stands at 1.58. This figure has been declining steadily since 2007 when it was 2.5 and in 2013 when it was 1.65. One example of how data center providers strive to improve their power usage effectiveness, or PUE, is through server efficiency. This is where newer servers are able to handle higher workloads with similar or even lower power consumption. Finally, the fourth key area of environmental focus for data center operators is water sustainability. 
Water sustainability includes projects such as the reduction of potable, meaning safe to drink water use, for the purposes of cooling, on-site water treatment, rainwater capture, and water restoration, which is particularly in vulnerable regions with what is known as high water stress. Water usage effectiveness, also known as WUE, is a sustainability metric that measures the water used by data centers to cool their equipment. Water usage effectiveness is calculated by dividing annual water usage by the energy consumption of the IT computing equipment in kilowatt hours. So with that overview of the four areas of environmental focus for data center operators, now let's detail some of the specific environmental information on the six largest publicly traded data center operators in the United States. Specifically, we provide detail on each data center provider's energy consumption, renewable energy use, power sustainability, and water sustainability. We discuss these environmental factors both in terms of current achievements and each operator's targets for the future, if they have any. So first, starting with Equinix, the largest data center provider globally. Equinix consumed a total of 5,740 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year, which is comprised of electricity and chilled water. Of this total, 5,250 gigawatt hours, or 92%, came from renewable energy sources. In terms of power sustainability, Equinix reports a power usage effectiveness ratio, or PUE, of 1.54, with its current data center build standards being a power usage effectiveness ratio of 1.45. In terms of water sustainability, Equinix does not report any water usage effectiveness ratio or other types of this information. So for Equinix and each of the six data center providers covered, we have broken down their targets into three key segments. First is carbon reduction targets, second is renewable energy targets, and third is water usage targets. We will use these three groupings as a framework to discuss and compare each of the data center providers. In terms of carbon reduction target, Equinix has the target to reduce its global carbon footprint across direct and indirect energy consumption and increase its focus on indirect value chain emissions. The direct energy being electricity, natural gas, and diesel, and the indirect being energy consumption from Equinix's tenants in their data centers. In terms of renewable energy targets, Equinix has a long-term target of using 100% clean energy. And indeed, all of Equinix's data centers in the United States and Europe have achieved 100% renewable energy use in 2019. In terms of water usage targets, Equinix is targeting a reduction in overall water consumption. One additional highlight to note about Equinix is that Equinix is the only data center provider that breaks out its energy consumption by type of renewable energy used, as you can see on screen. Specifically, Equinix's 5,250 gigawatt hours of renewable energy sources is split into four categories. First is green power from its suppliers. Second is renewable energy credits, known as RECs. Third is virtual or financial PPAs, which are power purchase agreements. And fourth is a category called grid mix remainder. Now moving to the second data center provider, Digital Realty. Digital Realty consumed a total of 6,904 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year. Of this total, 1,966 gigawatt hours, or 30%, came from renewable energy sources. In terms of power sustainability, Digital Realty does not report power usage effectiveness, also known as PUE, information, but targets a power usage effectiveness ratio of 1.5 as a baseline. In terms of water sustainability, Digital Realty reports a water usage effectiveness ratio, or WUE, of 1.58. In terms of carbon reduction target, Digital Realty intends to bring carbon emissions in line with a 1.5 degree climate change scenario by 2030. This is in reference to the science-based targets initiative known as SBTI. In terms of renewable energy targets, Digital Realty has the long-term goal to become 100% renewably powered. 
Additionally, Digital Realty targets 100% wind power for its United States co-location business and 100% renewable energy for all of its Europe, Middle East, and Africa properties. In terms of water usage target, Digital Realty intends to expand water conservation and efficiency efforts through reduction, reuse, and recycle projects, specifically as it relates to cooling technologies. Moving now to the third data center operator, being Cyrus One. Cyrus One consumed a total of 2,506 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year. Of this total, 456 gigawatt hours, or 18%, came from renewable energy sources. In terms of power sustainability, Cyrus One reports a power usage effectiveness ratio, or PUE, of 1.6. In terms of water sustainability, Cyrus One reports a water usage effectiveness ratio of 0.37, making it the top operator in terms of this metric. In terms of carbon reduction target, Cyrus One targets net zero carbon emissions, meaning carbon neutral, by 2040. In terms of renewable energy targets, Cyrus One has not set a long-term target, but notes that currently 100% of Cyrus One's facilities have the ability to offer customers some form of renewable power as an upgrade through the power provider at that facility. In terms of water usage target, Cyrus One intends to avoid dependence on water for cooling, and they are currently equipping all new data centers with water-free cooling. Additionally, most of Cyrus One's older facilities also use water-free cooling. Cyrus One also has the goal to restore water in high-risk regions. Specifically, they intend to have seven net positive water facilities in high-stress regions, as compared to only one currently. Finally, Cyrus One also wants to be what's known as net water positive by acquiring water restoration certificates, known as WRCs, to restore water to local ecosystems, making its presence a net benefit to the watersheds where it operates. Moving now to the fourth data center provider, Corsite. Corsite consumed a total of 908 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year. Of this total, 381 gigawatt hours, or 42%, came from renewable energy sources. In terms of power sustainability, Corsite reports a power usage effectiveness ratio, or PUE, of 1.4. In terms of water sustainability, Corsite does not report water usage effectiveness, or WUE, information. Overall, Corsite has rather disappointing commitments to carbon reduction, renewable energy, and water usage. Corsite has no carbon reduction target. Additionally, it has no renewable energy target, although it does have some water usage targets. Corsite intends to reduce the use of potable, meaning safe to drink, water for the purposes of cooling. Additionally, Corsite is targeting to minimize its fresh water footprint by utilizing rainwater for cooling when possible. It's worth noting that currently, Corsite primarily uses water for cooling at its data centers. Moving now to the fifth data center operator, QTS Realty Trust. QTS consumed a total of 1,186 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year. Of this total, 380 gigawatt hours, or 32%, came from renewable energy sources. In terms of power sustainability, QTS does not report a power usage effectiveness ratio, or PUE, but our analysis shows that QTS's power usage effectiveness ratio is ultimately greater than 1.5. In terms of water sustainability, QTS reports a water usage effectiveness, or WUE ratio, of 1.63. In terms of carbon reduction targets, QTS currently does not have any. In terms of renewable energy targets, QTS in the medium term targets achieving 50% of power from renewable energy sources by 2022. In the long term, QTS intends to procure 100% of its power from renewable energy sources by 2025. In terms of water usage targets, QTS intends to conserve at least 15 million gallons of water per year. Indeed, QTS has already achieved its prior goal to conserve at least 10 million gallons of water per year. Finally, now moving to the sixth data center operator we cover, which is Switch Inc. 
Switch consumed a total of 690 gigawatt hours of energy over the past year. Of this total, the entire 690 gigawatt hours, or 100%, came from renewable energy sources, which makes Switch top of the pack amongst its peers. In terms of power sustainability, Switch reports a power usage effectiveness, or PUE ratio, of 1.23, also making it to the top of the list amongst its peers. In terms of water sustainability, Switch does not report water usage effectiveness, or WUE, information. In terms of carbon reduction targets, Switch already operates with zero greenhouse gas emissions for equipment inside its data centers by using renewable energy. In terms of renewable energy targets, Switch is already at 100%. Since January 2016, Switch has powered all of its U.S. data centers with 100% clean and renewable energy. Indeed, Switch is the largest data center operator in the United States to be 100% renewably powered. However, in terms of water usage target, Switch has not made it clear what their long-term goals are. Stepping even out of the data center universe, Overall, Switch is one of the most environmentally conscious technology firms in the world. Switch is the only company that Greenpeace recognizes in its Clicking Clean report as having a 100% clean energy index. The company's energy index was higher than every other technology company identified in the report, including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Salesforce. Additionally, Switch was the only company in the report to receive an A grade in all five categories measured by Greenpeace. So that wraps up our environmental analysis on the six largest publicly traded data center operators in the United States. If you want to dive deeper into data centers, then we recommend checking out two of our most recent videos. First, check out the video, Top 5 Data Center Companies and 7 US Markets. In this video, we provide a comparison of the five largest data center companies in the United States, including Equinix, Digital Realty, Cyrus One, CoreSight, and QTS Realty Trust. Additionally, we walk through a comparison of the top seven data center markets in the US, including Northern Virginia, Silicon Valley, Greater New York, Chicago, Dallas-Fort Worth, Phoenix, and Atlanta. Second, we recommend checking out the video Top 5 Data Center Markets in Europe. In this video, we provide a comparison of the top 5 data center markets in Europe, including Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris, and Dublin. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.